Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're going to be going over how to use little nav maps, but more importantly, we're going to go over how to create your very own IFR flight plan using Airways, the quick and easy way. So, if you want to know more about little nav maps and how to create your very own IFR flight plan, then I think you should stay tuned right here on 2020 Flight Simmers. All right, everyone. So, welcome back to Little Nav Maps, and we are going to start with our IFR flight plan creation. Oh, and by the way, if you are new to the channel, I highly suggest you go down below and hit that subscribe and tick that little bell because you do not want to miss any of our future videos just like this one. And if you do learn something from the video today or just plain like watching it, then consider smashing that thumbs up button. It really helps us get found by viewers like yourself. All right, so now that we have got that out of the way, Let's get right into little nav maps here. Now, if you haven't seen how to get little nav maps and how to set up your screen like I have right here, then I will go ahead and post a link down below to how to acquire little nav maps and set everything up. All right, so for those of you who enjoy creating your flight plan from scratch, then you need to make sure that you can have all of the airways visible whenever you want to make your flight plan. So to turn on your airways on little nav maps, it is pretty simple. All you need to do is come right up here to the top and we have our Victor Airways and Jet Airways right here. So to activate those, all you gotta do is give a big old tick on both of them and bada bam, bada boom, there you go. Now you can see the spider web of mess on your screen. Now, this is great for those people that want to create that IFR flight plan from scratch, but mm -mm, that is not us over here. So we're going to do it the quick and easy way, but we're going to leave these on the screen so we can see just how they are utilized in the flight plan. So the first thing that we need to do is select a departure airport. Now, to do that, you can either come over here to the airport menu and type in the airport ICAO or you can come right down here to the airport you want and we're going to use KCLT today and if you right click on that airport it will bring you up this beautiful dialog box the next thing you want to do is go right down here to departure and give a big old left click on that now that we have set up our departure airport and it is also highlighted in yellow as you can see now we need to come over here and select our arrival airport now the arrival airport we're going to use today is kmci and we're going to do that the other way so we're going to hop right on over here to the airport and type in kmci now, when you do, you're going to see that airport pop right up down here in the descriptions. If you right click on that, it will then bring up that same dialog box. You can then highlight select as destination, give a big old left click on it and ba bam. Now you have your point A to point B flight plan. But that is not what we want. We want to incorporate airways into this flight plan. All right, so now that we are pretty much halfway there, all we need to do next is to come over here and select our altitudes. So on this trip today, because we are going from east to west, we are going to be traveling at an even altitude. We're going to just select, say, 20,000 feet for today's flight. And then on the next box over, we can then tick either an IFR or VFR flight. Now, the next thing that we really want to make sure that we do is select the correct plane for our fuel report. And this will accurately calculate the top of climb and the top of descent down here in the flight plan elevation profile. Now, we go over all of this and more in that other episode that we have linked down below. So I, if you don't have little nav maps, I highly suggest you go down there and watch that first and then come back to the video because that'll make it that much more easier for you to navigate. 
All right, so now to set up the correct plane under the fuel report menu, all you need to do is head right on up top side to the aircraft, open aircraft performance. For today's flight, we're gonna use the Cessna Longitude. Then you hit open and it will download all of that information here. Now, because I was using Cessna, you're not gonna see any change here. So let's go ahead and just change that to the TBM. And there you go. Now you can see all of that information had just changed to the TBM specs. So it's going to give you your climb and descent as well as fuel that's going to be used on the flight and the distance and time. So this is very, very helpful for your IFR or VFR flights. Now we're going to head back over to the flight planning menu. And now this is the easiest part of the entire flight plan. All we need to do to finish this out is to come right up top again. The second level down of icons, you're going to find the icon with the little red asterisk and this little wiggly line next to it. I think that's a wand, like a magic wand. I'm not sure. But anyway, if you click on that with your left mouse button, it will then bring up this cool little flight plan calculation box. Now the first menu that's on this box, or I should say the first selection that we can choose in this would be either to calculate this flight plan from the departure to destination, meaning from point A to point B, or we can calculate for a selection in the flight plan. Now, because we want this to do everything for us, we want the easy way. So we're just gonna make sure that the first one is ticked. Now, the next item down here would be the cruise altitude that we're going to be cruising at today. And we have already selected that for 20,000 feet. If you decide that, hey, that's a little bit too high or it's not high enough, then you can already just go right ahead and adjust it, hit the adjust button, and there you go. It now adjusted our cruise altitude for us. Now the next selection below would be the airways menu. So this section is gonna be the most appealing for those that wanna get airways input into your flight plan so that you can use that G3000 and the G1000 and actually be able to put airways in now. So now on this menu, we have a couple different selections. We can either choose all airways, jet airways, which are your high altitude, or the Victor airways, which are your low altitude airways. Now, because we are probably not gonna be using jet airways on today's flight, because we're only going to 18,000 feet, we can select Victor airways. Then up top side here again, we can also uncheck the jet airways and just leave the Victor airways highlighted. Now the next menu on here is that we can avoid all RNAV airways. Now we don't want to avoid RNAV airways, but you can use that if you choose to do so. Now the very next item down here is a slider and this is going to be your preference whether you would rather have more airways or a more direct flight. So depending on where you slide this here thing will depend on the directness. Is that a word? Directness? Ah, uh, we're just going to go with it. Of your flight. <laughs> so the, the uh, next one down, and this probably won't appeal to those that want to use airways. This item is to check for radio nav aids. So when you tick on this, you can now use NDBs for your navigation. But again, we don't want to use that. We want to use airways. So now that you have selected that, we're just going to move this off the screen here a little bit so you can see what's going to happen here. Now, once you've got everything set up, which really isn't much, you're going to go down here, bada bing, bada boom, smash on that calculate button. And you may or may not get a cool little error message that pops up on your screen. So now when you get this error here, it can be one of a couple different things that is happening here with your flight plan. Now it can either be the cruise altitude is a little off so it cannot create that flight plan for you based on the conditions that you had set over here for the software to create the flight plan for you. In my opinion that we are probably cruising at too high of an altitude to use Victor Airways. So all I'm gonna do is highlight jet airways, which are the high altitude airways. And we're gonna try that one more time. And fingers crossed everyone, here we go. 
Bam! There we go. Look at that beautiful flight plan that it has now created for us using Airways. Now, if you come down below here and you just hover right over top of your yellow track mark here and tap that left button, bring that out, you can see that we are right along this blue airway right here. So I'm just going to hit the undo button and bring that back. And now that is how to create a flight plan using airways. <laughs> so now all we have done right now is created the flight plan from point A to point B, but we didn't actually put in there how we're going to enter that airport and how we're going to leave the departure airport in this flight plan. So to be able to select a departure and arrival procedures for any of the airports, well, you've got a couple different ways in which you can do that. So if you hover over that airport again and just right click on that, you can now highlight show information. Now that is gonna show all of your information right over here in the information box. So you can pull up all the information for different ILSs, airspaces, etc. But if you want to show your procedures one down and if you click on show departure procedures for Charlotte, it will now bring up your plethora of departure procedures for that airport. Now, if you do not want just departures and you want to see all the procedures, all you want to do is come right up here to the departure procedures box here. And if you tick on that, you can now select arrival procedures, only approach and transitions or all procedures. Now we're going to select departure procedures today. Now, keep in mind that before creating your flight plan, you want to get the airport METAR data so that you can figure out which runways are the active runways for the airport. So that will really help you once you try to file that IFR flight plan with clearance delivery and they go ahead and switch out a runway on you because you picked the wrong runway for your departure. So what I can tell you right now is because we're going to be going north, we're going to pick runway 36 center to depart on. All right, so now that we know that we are gonna be using runway 36 center, under the departure procedures over here to the right, all you need to do is scroll down to 36 center. Now, all of these departure procedures apply to this particular runway that we're going to be departing on. If you left click on any one of these procedures, it will now show you that entire departure route. All we want to do is select a route that is going to be closest to matching our flight plan. Now there's a couple different ones that I could choose from on this list. This would be one of them and that could be another one or that could be one. Now, what I'm thinking is we're not going to use this one because it's going to really make us do a hard left hand turn as we depart the airport. And I want to keep the food in my passenger's stomach. So we're just going to go ahead and choose this one right here. Now, you can expand that menu here by just ticking on this little arrow to the left of it, and it will tell you everything that's going to be in this departure. Now, if you decide that you also want to incorporate the transition into this departure, now you can click on the different transitions. So we are going to add a transition here, and that is going to be the SMIAM transition. Now, to add the departure to our current flight plan, all that we need to do is to right click on that and then insert transition into flight plan. Now, there you go. It has now inserted the departure procedure into our flight plan. Well, now you're gonna look at this thing and say, well, wait a minute, that looks really sharp of a turn right there. We'll get back to that. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our arrival airport. Again, you wanna get the METAR data to find out which runways are gonna be the active runways, but we're going to, for sake of time, Let's just say that the active runway at this airfield is going to be 01 right. 
All right, so that is going to be our active runway, 01 right. And all we need to do again is, well, we're going to try this out the secondary way. So we're going to come up here to airports, highlight KMCI again. Now that you have this in here, all you have to do is right click on that and you can now show arrival procedures. That's simple. Now that we know we're coming in on 01 right, we can now look at the stars for 01 right. Now there's only a couple here, so if we click on them, let's zoom out a little bit. If we click on them, we can now see the procedure right on the screen here. Now that one doesn't look like one we would wanna use. That one could be one we would use. That one we probably wouldn't want to use, but that one seems like a pretty good one that we can use. All right, so now we want to expand that again by just ticking on this little box right here. And let's look at the transition for that is going to be right down here. Perfect. We are actually going to be using this VOR in the flight plan. So this transition is going to be perfect. So now all we need to do is to right click on that, insert that into our flight plan. It's going to now ask us what runway we're going to be arriving at. Now we know we're going to be coming in at 01 right because we've already established that. We're going to left click on that and now we're telling the software that we're coming in on a 01 right. Now there's one more bit of this information that we need to put in here and that's going to be the approach. Now we know we're coming in on 01 right, so we're just going to look right down here to find anything that says 01 right, and those are the ones that we're going to be able to use. So we have an ILS approach for 01 right. We also have an RNAV approach for 01 right. Oh, and by the way, you're going to notice on some of these RNAVs that they're going to have a Z, a Y. Now, that means that there is a couple different routes for this one particular RNAV procedure. The reason why is if the airport gets overloaded with inbound approaches that they need to separate some people around, that is the reasoning for that. Now, the one you're always going to pick if you decide that you want to do an RNAV approach is always going to be the Zulu approach. That's going to be the first one you're going to pick unless otherwise instructed from clearance delivery when you call in your IFR flight plan. But we are not going to come in on an RNAV approach. We're going to use the ILS 201 right. Now, as you can see on the screen right here, it has pulled up the approach for 01 right, as well as the missed approach procedure, which is right here. I think that is really, really cool. Now, again, we can expand that menu by just clicking to the left of it. And now we can see the full procedure here. Now, if we click on transition, it will bring up the full transition to that runway. Now, if you'd like to expand the transition menu, which you can do in any of the other ones, if you click on the box to the left of that, it will give you all the different waypoints along the transition route. Now, as we're looking at the flight plan here with the different options that we have to choose from, we have already selected an arrival to bring us all the way into trike. Now, if we were to select this transition, which is way back here from the end of the arrival, well, now we're going to wind up coming back out here and trying to pick up the transition to this approach. So what I would rather do, you can see from trike to the airport itself has this dotted line here, and that is because that is most likely going to be a vectored route for us because the end of that flight plan ends right here until this point. And now this is where we would be vectored in. So what we want to do is we're not gonna select the transition for this approach. Now, if we were not gonna be using this arrival procedure, then I would probably select this full transition to the approach for ILS 01 right, and that will be coming directly from the VOR down here. So I hope this explains when you may or may not want to use an approach transition when you're using an arrival procedure. But again, that is only in this particular instance. 
So this only applies for this particular flight plan. If the transition was a little bit further north, then it probably would make sense to go to the transition for the approach. But for this particular flight plan, we are not gonna use that transition. We're just gonna click on approach and then we're gonna right click on that and insert that into our flight plan. Now let's see what happens if we were to put this transition in and I'll show you what was gonna happen. So if we go to full transition and right click and insert into our flight plan, now you can see why I did not wanna use the transition to the approach for ILS-01 right because it's going to have us doing this hard left hand turn. So I hope that makes a little bit of sense as to why I didn't want to use that. So now from the last waypoint of our arrival procedure to the first waypoint of the approach procedure is going to be vectored from ATC in this particular instance. All right, so now we're going to come down here and take a look at this hard left hand turn that we were gonna have to make as we exited the departure procedure here. Now, the first thing that I think we could do would be to get rid of this waypoint right here. So by going over here to our flight plan menu, highlighting that, and as you see, the little green circle will appear. If you right click on that and go down to delete selected legs or procedure, it will now create a direct line, which is going to be a lot easier to navigate versus what was there. Now, here's the next thing that we need to take a look at when we're creating this IFR flight plan. So now that we have deleted that waypoint from the flight plan, as you can see, it gave us a more direct route right to our first Vortac, which is SPA right down here. But as you can see, it also brings us right back through the Bravo airspace here. Now, we know this is a Bravo because if you left click on the airspace that it's crossing through, right over here on the airspace information box, information. <laughs> it's going to tell us that is a class Bravo and the minimum and maximum altitudes for this airspace. So now that we know that, we also can see there's another airport right out here, and this is most likely a class Delta. I also want to know what the minimums are for this airspace. So if we left click on that, we can then come down here and also see that the minimum and maximum altitude for this class Delta is 3,700 feet MSL. So that tells us that if we want to cross over this airport, that we need to be higher than 3,700 feet. Now my brain is just a rolling right now, so what I think I'm gonna do is if I highlight over this yellow line and left click it, I can drag and drop right over top of this VOR, click add VOR, and now I am away from the class Bravo airspace, which I would most likely bust at 6,000 feet, and I most likely will be above 3,700 feet by the time I make it through this departure procedure and start my left-hand turn towards this VOR. So that shows you how we were able to divert away from that those really sharp turns and also to make sure that we don't bust any other airspaces along the way. All right, everyone. So I think we are going to wrap up the video here for today on Little Nav Maps and creating our very own IFR flight plan, the quick and easy way. If you guys have any questions, please post them down below in the comments section. And if you learned something on today's episode, a big thumbs up to the channel would be greatly appreciated. If you haven't done so already, please go down below and hit that subscribe and tick that little bell. And to all of my flight simming community around the world, keep the blue side up. We will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.